All right, here we go. Uh, welcome back to uh, to Once Upon a Game, uh, second episode, and we're going to be once again exploring the awesome game of Microscope by Ben Robbins. Um, my name's Eric, and I'll be your facilitator for this evening. Um, and before we begin, uh, why don't we just go around real quick and say who we are? Okay, I guess it. I guess we're gonna go down again. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go next. Um, hi, I'm William. You saw me on the first episode where I turned 16 right before your eyes. Um, let's see. I've had at least five games experience with microscope, probably six or seven. Um, one, and I really enjoy the game. Uh. Yeah, I'm just excited to play again. Oh, awesome. Hi, I'm Matt. Uh, I played with Eric a couple times on Microscope before. Uh, uh, last time I played with the, when we did the Vikings, it like invaded yeah. my dream for several days. So uh, I'm excited to play again, definitely. Yeah, I'm happy to have you. Um, hi, I'm Ben, uh, also known as Sith Master on some of the Math Squad community stuff. Uh, this is my first time playing Microscope. Um, as far as story games, I played Fiasco a few times, but that's about it. Um, so looking forward to this game overall. So it'll be fun. Awesome, awesome. So um, there's just, as we all kind of know, there's there's two main rules before we actually start playing Microscope. Um, the first one is that uh, this is like a story game and it can fail um, and the most common way it fails is that you you kind of hold on to your your ideas too much um, and it's really important to understand that there's just uh, there's no GM so it's kind of just all us and you know you're you're only one person of a group of four so your own idea is sort of like you, you have a minority stakeholder in the entire group itself so people will riff on your ideas just how you will riff on them um, and the second thing is the if you know just the rule and common courtesy is that you know we're all f kind of friends on the internet but um, you know maybe we're not as close friends as we think uh, if there's something that you know is triggering to you or whatever just just ex we can exit out to say uh, X or you know Eric I'm not comfortable or just say, you know, I'm not comfortable. And like magic, it's gone, and you don't have to explain why. Um, it's perfectly fair. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, that's just for, you know, a safe environment, because the worst possible games are games that you wish you could X something out and you didn't, and now you feel like you've consented to something that you didn't want. Um, you can always just do it. Uh, so those are like the two big overview rules before we get down any further, and are we okay with that? Awesome. So, um, all right, now let's actually play some Microscope. So, uh, Microscope's a game about epic histories. Um, we're going to be exploring um, some sort of like theme or like a, just a one sentence idea. Um, then we're gonna break it into a cross section of history, and we're just gonna ex from from one end uh, and then another like a bookend, and we're just gonna explore how we get from like that one bookend to the other, uh, and it's it's always fun. Um, we don't know what we're going to do beforehand. Uh, we're all going to come up with that right now. So uh, let's let's open this up. Um, what are we thinking for a high, a high concept, guys? Mm. I brought it up before, uh, beforehand that I kind of had this idea for the investigation following like the 1900s or like or late 1800s uh, axe murders in the style of Lizzie Borday. Yeah. Be spooky for Halloween esque casting here. That seems good. It sort of seems like we need to broaden it up a little bit, though, for microscope. Um. Yeah. I don't know how long like a killing spree would last, and I guess you could probably do it in microscope, <laughs> but maybe something broader. I do like the idea of um of having some like an old like an old town, and yeah. like spooky things happening to the town. Maybe uh, like, yeah. um, 
could be like a like just um, bad things keep happening to this town. Yeah, so maybe like the history of an unfortunate 18th century town. Yeah. Um, North America. Uh, I kind of want to lean to a North American town, and mm -hmm. uh, like not North American, but I mean New England town or whatever. Oh, okay. We want to do a New England town. Um, yeah. Kind of like a Stephen King Maine. Thing. Yeah, or like yeah. I was thinking, like Lovecrafty and Arkham. Right. Well, yeah. Like I can kind of get into Lovecraft stuff as well. Um, or like Innsmouth more. Um, okay. Here's here's what I'm thinking then. Um, we should probably come up with the name of the town now, so I can put it in this in the concept. Okay. Um. Anything jumping out re real quick? We could do like um. We could. So do something, something, something no. ominous, maybe like something fall or something ends, like lands end or lands fall, something like that. If that sort of jives with you guys. Mm -hmm. Anyone remember the name of the town from um, from Gilmore Girls? <laughs> 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 yeah, um, I like like I uh, of all of them, I liked Lands End the most. Yeah, yeah, okay. Not Halloween Town, Gwen. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the history of a small New Eng of of a small New England town, Lands End, uh, circa nineteen hundred. Um, sir. Mm, circuit probably like but do we want 1900 ish like so so like 19... pre like around like the dawn of electricity becoming common uh, i kind of would like it to be less recent maybe it can end in 1900 but i'd prefer if it started around um the do you want like, like if... pre-civil war yeah like maybe actually a colonial town if that works uh, I don't know if that's not fine with everyone, but like I was sort of imagining like going from sixteen, uh, like late sixteen hundreds to early eighteen hundreds. Um, what do you guys think? You want to do that? Oh, uh, let's just do. Okay, how about this? Uh, let's do the spooky history of New England town, um, Lands End. All right, let's just leave it at that for the sentence, and then we'll define the times and stuff from the bookends, maybe. Like the actual yeah. part of the game, which is the this, which is this part. So now we can kind of figure out where do we want this history to begin, and where do we want it to end. So you guys heard my bit about where I want it to end, and yeah, I like the idea of the American Revolution, like that time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, yeah, I've just been doing. I've just been in colonial and revolutionary history for the past month and I've just been bubbling with ideas and I just like that aesthetic and everything. Is it like going so early that like the French and Indian War would be in play? Mm-hmm. I was imagining it starts um, during the period of solitary neglect and ends around oh, okay. the era of good feelings or whatever. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so okay. Definitely. Um, so then, so it's not Revolutionary War just yet. Um, I'll just say um, Colonial. Um, Pre-Revolutionary War. Um, time of uh, solitary, it's solitary neglect, right? Uh, I just um, do pre-revolutionary war, uh, colonial. Yeah, um, colonial works. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we all get the picture. Um, is this a light or a dark time? Mm, I. I'd say. Light. Um. Yeah. We'll, we'll have a Kickstarter event. Uh, start to slow down Paul, I think we'll 
Uh, so, Ben, how familiar are you with what light and dark mean in terms of like the tone for the game of a microscope? Vaguely. Okay. Um... So, um, kind of by and large, they're just sort of like statements upon what you think the fiction is heading in these big periods. They're not end all be all. So you can have dark events and light times, and light time, uh, light events and dark times. Um, so. It, like just whenever someone says light or dark, it's kind of subjective and what we think together. Um, so we're, but I think right now that's that's two. I'm kind of leaning towards light as well. So I think this will be light. Yeah, yeah. It seems like sort of like the if, if we're thinking about it, the town, right? It's like the founding of the town, which is kind of like this like opportunistic. Look what mm. we can do. That seems light to me. Yeah. So. Okay. And so when when does our history end? Um, I, I want like a dedicated event. Yeah. Uh, Me too. Like, some like vile come into the town. Maybe like the town burns down or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we want we want the end. We want the a tragic ending to the town. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are we on board with that? Okay. Um, what should I call it? Should I call that the uh, downfall of Land's End? Or the, I don't want to call it the end of Land's End, but maybe. <laughs> uh, the ghost fires could be an interesting ending. Oh, do you want to call it that? Or it could even be like a Roanoke type thing, right? Or like. Yeah, like yeah. we don't we're not dis, we're not defining yet how how it's um how it's destroyed. Yeah. It's just that we're signifying that the town is no more. I'll just say Land's yeah. End is no more. The loss of Land's End. Yeah, that sure. works. There's a Edgar Allan Poe riff there somewhere. Yeah. Um but we should establish roughly around the time um the loss of Land's End. Um Actually, I don't know. I would just say uh, the town is no longer, or the town is no more. I'll just leave it yeah. at that, and we'll figure out where, where it goes. Um, okay, so those are our bookends. Um, the next thing we do is that we come up with the palette. Um, and so the palette is something that it's going to be sort of like these ideas and thoughts that we're having for the game. Um, whenever we don't know or we're not sure what we kind of want to add or make a twist or an idea about what we want to include in the game, we can always look to the palette to guide us. Um, the yes category are things that you know we should consider. Those are the things that we've telegraphed that we want in the game. And the no palette are things that are completely off limits. So it's, it's illegal to use something with the no palette. Um, so I suggest that we all come up with like two or three things each. Um, for your f just total um, in terms of how this in terms of the palette process and the way I like to do it is uh, if one person puts something forward uh, then you hold back until everyone else gets a chance to go and then you can introduce something else um, so I'm going to open it uh, to the floor slash internet um, is there anything on any of you guys minds that's like absolutely needs to be in this game or absolutely should has no has no purpose being in this game well, well, when you guys were first talking about kind of making it like spooky turn of the century, so this might be a little later than what some were thinking, but maybe like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein type vibe going on with it, um, like with the electricity and everything. I'm not sure how that's like a one word or a two word phrase, but um, like experimental sci, like like um, I know what you mean, like proto gothic stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mad science. Yeah, I would say I'll say mad science, uh, proto, uh, gothic. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Um, it reminds me a lot of um, Nathaniel Hawthorne or like Edgar Allan Poe or like Marie Shelley, kind of like gothic romanticism, like twists. Yeah. Yeah, um, like um, Penny Dread. Like Penny Dreadful esque. And yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, cool. Okay. 
So definitely we're all for the mad science and proto-gothic kind of horror stuff. So, okay. Okay. Um, uh, I kind of want, even even though there's definitely going to be fictional elements, I want it to be, like, um, historically at least parallel. Like, big events that... I want it to exist in America, regardless of whether or not it's actual it actually could happen okay so you want to so what you're saying then is like you want to see um famous um, historical uh, um american historical events yeah and trends like i want to see the american revolution and the federalist era that kind of thing okay cool yeah uh, i know what you mean so but like with a twist then obviously yeah like this is a fictional town yeah no, I, I submitted something like that similarly um, when I was doing a post-apocalyptic Oregon Trail game um, where I had, like, I was really into the landmarks of the Oregon Trail, and I wanted to see what we think of the landmarks when we're doing this game. Uh, definitely. it's a, That's a fine thing for a palette. Um, uh, I'm going to go with witches and witches' curses, especially since we started so early. Yeah. That whole New England vibe of like the whole like Salem witch trial yeah. type thing. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Do you mean no literal witches or like no not even any witch hunts or anything? No, I'm I'm saying there should definitely be a uh, like witches curse upon the town. Oh, oh, you this is for the yes category. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Witches and curses. Sure. All right. Um no, um, no aliens, no, no, like space coming down invasions. No, like body snatcher stuff. Um, okay, I think that's kind of, that's one pass for all of us. What else are we thinking? Are we still doing yes? Or... Oh, uh, uh, it, it can do yes, either. no, it, it's either, yeah, it's it's either right now. I, I like the whole witch and witch trial stuff, but one thing I want to say no to is getting, like, too puritanical or too religious. Um, if that makes sense. You mean, like... Yeah. We can't have um, heavy religious themes. Is right. Or... Yeah. Um. Strong. Okay. So I'll say strong religious themes. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think we're on the same page. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Uh, I'm gonna go with no Jersey Devils or like other schlocky, uh, like mythical monsters. Okay. Does so Lovecraftian stuff was mentioned earlier? Does that include that? No, no just like no. Or this Jersey is like Devil no Bigfoot. Jersey Devil, no Bigfoot. Okay. I love how Lovecraftian stuff comes up as an outlier, no matter what palette people are doing. Yeah, good point. Um, no Jersey Devil, um, Bigfoot, etc. Okay. Um, uh, I want to say definitely no steampunk i feel like there's a chance it could go that way and i just want to nip it in the bud no problem oh no 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 steampunk's bad it's just no steampunk yeah <laughs> um yeah i was leaning that way too but i wasn't sure how no th that th sort of went with the mad scientist thing where that's like sort of like pro new electricity type tesla stuff in my mind but not like the yeah. Back to the Future refrigerator type thing in the in the second movie or third movie, I guess. 
like, um, I feel like it's different in that steampunk would be like, they make weird mechanical creations out of steamboats and stuff, which happened, like, uh, not, it didn't happen, it didn't actually happen, but like, you know, it would have happened in the sound during whatever. You know what I mean. Just well, no steampunk, mm -hmm. yes, electricity punk. Yeah. What do you mean by that? I don't. I don't think I'm familiar with that. What that means? Like you can, there can be Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde. There can be Frankenstein, that type of thing. But no, like, oh, this is a weird clockwork automaton, or this is a steam automaton, right. that type of thing. The tropes of steampunk are not okay. No, the tropes no airships, of... no. Yeah. Right, that right. Kind of thing. Okay. Automatons, airships. Yeah. Okay. But, um, uh, what I would say is okay, because it kind of crosses the border, but I like it, is if we had something that was, like, a person put a bit of, uh, like, a person meshing their flesh with a clockwork or steam creation. That see, that I sounds think. very steampunk to me. That's very steampunk to me. <laughs> yeah, but it's, like, that's the... That's the border in my mind. Um, I'll say overt steampunk. Yeah, it can be light as long as it's more heavy, penny dreadful, if that makes sense. Okay. Um. Ooh. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm starting to get some ideas for this game. Um. So what else? So I know we were, we we talked a little bit. Um, so this is part of this is this is an interesting part about microscope. I know we talked a little bit about um, ideas and stuff in the game, but if it's not if it's not in a no category, it's fair game. Yeah. Um, and if you want to see something, put, remind us and put it in the yes category. So I'm thinking. Um, you know what I want to see. I want to see secret societies. Oh. Uh, I want to see a dark relationship with the sea. With the sea? With the sea. Okay. So, uh, we, we can interpret that as it goes along, but just, I, I picture a coastal town. No, yo, yeah. I think I'd like to see um, the trail most foul. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Um. I want to see. Oh. Uh, um. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, you can. I was gonna say no elves. Okay. Just to just to be clear, okay. no elves or or fairies. Yeah. I want. Um, that includes dwarves. You know what I mean? Like no yeah. no like hobbits. None of that. No fantasy no, races. Orcs. Yeah. No Tolkien slash European myth. I want. I want in the yes category to this for this to be like the um a poster city for New England geographically. Like, I want to see all the highlights of New England geography, including, like, coasts and mountains and forests and stuff. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, I'll say New England geography. That's something we should we can touch on. Cool. Um, Are we okay with this palette? This palette's getting pretty filled out. Um, yeah, I like it. Do you... Any any outstanding questions about anything that we ca that we came up with or or anything before we move on? Mm. Cool. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm as, yeah. <laughs> as long as strong religious themes does not include the or preclude the uh, existence of like demons and devils. Oh, th I'm actually going to put that in the yes category. I want to see. Um, not physic like maybe not physical maybe it actually should go in the cat in the no category but like the the invisible presence of evil you know what i mean 
like Lord like of the Flies, I think. Yeah, and I'm, well, I'm also thinking of like, um, like possessions and like, uh, what okay. at the Exorcist, like we you know, like things where things happen, uh, by an invisible force, uh, like demons don't have a form, uh, they're just, um, you know, they're un, they're not unsubstantial, but they they so, still uh, exist in an area. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm thinking about specifically like succubuses and incubuses, as that's a big part of like early Proto American. Like, okay, so I'll, I'll just say. Um, I'm okay with that. I think with the. Are we okay with physical stuff if if it's cool? Uh yeah. If it's done uh, tastefully. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I guess when I when I put that in the no, I was thinking of like the sort of like. Someone going as like a fire and brimstone speech as like a Puritan priest. Yeah, you you did s- or something, but I didn't really want to explore that. No, absolutely no. You definitely did say puritanical, and I omitted that. Um, just for brevity's sake, but I think I put it back in there because I think that's um, important. Because it was something in colonial times, but I just yeah. No, it. totally, totally. <laughs> um, maybe, um, maybe we start like right after the Great Awakening has passed through the town, so it's much more um, Protest like much more um, diverse religiously. <laughs> um. Yeah, because no, like, that's possible. Well, we already we already established it's colonial. Yeah, it's just uh, the Great Awakening was like a period during colonial times that was like late colonial times. Yeah, I think like 1830s or whatever. It, no, or no, 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 like, it's late 1700s. I'm, I've messed yeah. up. It was like 1770s or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Well, I think um, I think our palette's full. I think I think we're good to go for the ready yeah. for the first pass. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So um, the the way of the the next step works is that we all get to make either a period or an event. And events live in uh in in periods. And uh, just describe what it is and whether it's light and dark. And um, since I owe Will a favor for him not going last game, uh, Will, uh, would you mind starting, uh, and then being the lens and stuff after this as well? Is that okay? Okay, cool. cool. Um, so, are are we doing this where we just describe it to you and you make all the cards, or are we doing this where we make our own cards and describe it as we're making it? Uh, what are we comfortable with? Uh, if you don't mind, I'd kind of prefer to do it that way because it sort of seems more cohesive. Sure. Than, like illustrating it. Yeah, well, the three, uh, the, uh, or excuse me, the four of us have editing privileges, so um, if we want to make something, you can. But I'll do it for you. Yeah. Sure. So, what do you want? want to, what do you want to make? Okay. Um, I want the period to be the um, Jeffersonian era or whatever, and I want to like highlight that the town goes through a manufacturing boom. So that's like early 1800s? Uh, yeah, that's like 1800 to, it's 1801 to 18, uh, to like 1816. Yeah. Well, I mean, I caution, I caution all of us to like avoid maybe like specific dates in terms of when yeah. things happen because things can change drastically. Yeah, yeah. But um, but like, just get an idea really of what cool. it means. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah, totally. Um, like it's I a good touch. Really it's it's it. more of a touchstone than it is uh, a fact. Yeah, I wasn't really saying it to give exact dates. I was more just saying it to show the time period. So like the first decade of the sure. 1800s. Industrial Revolution. Sure, the manufacturing boom. Done. Oh, is that a light or dark? Um. I'd say it's light. Sure. Okay. So now to Matthew. Um. I'm gonna add a period. Uh. We'll put it after the manufacturing boom. And we'll just call it uh, uh, a fall into corruption.
Okay. Uh, describe this period for us. Uh, it's just going to be like after every uh, somebody makes a lot of money in the town, and after that, uh, that there's either that family becomes strange, or uh, oh, okay, uh, yeah, or they just you know try to capitalistically take too much of the town. Uh, and, what do you call it? What What do you call the people who did that? Um, uh, like um. Like, like Robert, steel, Robert yeah. Oh, robber baron, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, uh, given given too much money, they just become too much of an influence over the town. But their family also becomes twisted and strange. And well, um, what I would say is, I think I think that might be getting too much into detail. Sure. But um, I think I would say uh, the rise of um, of robber barons and extreme capitalism. Sure. Because I mean, those things can those are events that could unfold in that. Um, yeah. And light or dark. Uh, we'll go dark. Yeah. Okay, Ben. Um. I think maybe one that sort of combines like some of the trial stuff we were talking about, like the town becomes at odds, but it's also uh, during the Civil War. Uh, if that's like not too... Are you talking late. about a period? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. I thought I was supposed to talk about period. No, it okay. could be an event as well. Oh, okay. It's just the the past two people chose periods. Um. So you want to do something about the Civil War? Yeah. Um, so describe the period for me. What makes it different um, than the manufacturing boom and the fall into corruption, and like what 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 strongly identifies it? What happens is that the the town comes at odds with each other, and there's lots of speculation and accusation going amongst all the different townsfolk. Say, so is that um, paranoia? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Okay, all right, paranoia. So, um, is this light or dark? Um, I think it's dark. <laughs> What's funny is that I think this game would be very, very, very apt to run in um, Microscope Explorer's Chronicle, but I'm not very familiar with the rules for that. So, let's yeah. do regular Microscope. Is Civil War uh, before the fall into corruption, or I, I, he didn't really say he? I just wanted to make that's sure. true. Um, oh. um, I was thinking it was after, but it. I think it would make more sense being before now that I think about it. Uh, if, if the rubber barons was like the industrial boom. Yeah, stuff. it's your call. Right. History, like um, how American history played out, is just a guideline. Yeah. Right. Oh. Uh, yeah, I like it coming after the corruption. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Then I will make an event. Um, this is actually, it should probably go under colonial lands end. Um, I would say the, the founding of the 
order of I'm trying to think of a, a secret society of um rich like basically like a freemasons type just society of like very wealthy individuals well uh, let's make it after like several families and so we'll call it like uh the order of the six rings or something like that and there's always a well patron of the family or like real, where you're... yeah no, no, no. I'm, I'm just trying to think of something because okay. it's, it's really supposed to be um, a person submits with as little feedback as possible. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of it. I'm just trying to think of a cool name. I was thinking of the Order of the Cross, but like that, I don't, I don't want to do that. Um, especially with the no like religious themes, and that could get in different ways. Um, the founding of the Order of how about the Falcon? Um, so these guys are a secret society of rich people, um, who are kind of like controlling of, of the town and their motives and reasoning is unclear at this point. Okay. So, um, that goes the first pass, um, which means the next thing to do is Will comes up with the focus because he is the lens, and then he gets to go. Okay. Um, okay, I'm kind of split between like two ideas so uh, I'll go with suspicion because that's a nice general one and it's usually good to start generally cool all right so now you get to make um yeah um Okay, uh, it's going to be during the, uh, it's going to be during the Civil War. Okay, so it's going to be an event and a scene? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, oops. Okay. And it's going to be like. Okay, it's going to be called the the secessionist trials. Ooh, light or dark? Um, dark. Okay. Okay, and it's going to be I can choose do I have to choose a directed scene or can I choose a non-directed scene? Uh, it's your choice. Yeah, okay, it's going to be a non-directed scene. Okay, so like an all-play scene. Mm -hmm. Sure. And... It's going to be... Why did... Why was Mark Lee hung during the secessionist trials? Sure. So where does this scene take place? Um, inside a, um, a courtroom. It's 10 o'clock at night. Okay. Um, now, uh, requiring and banning characters. You can require up to two and ban up to two. Um, okay. I'm going to require... A... I'm going to require... A judge. 
Okay. And a. I'm going to also require a member of the Order of the Falcon. Sure. All right. Any banned and characters? Can I just ban a jury, or is that not a? Does that not count as a character? You want to ban a member of the jury, like or any yeah. member of the jury? Um. Yeah, I want to just ban the jury as a concept, or does that? I can I not do that? No, you can say. Uh, that's fine. No jury members. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so then it goes to me. Um, and I get to start picking a person, and then it works backwards. So it will be me, Ben, Matthew, then Will, in terms of character selection. Um, I want to be... Um, I want to be Lady uh, Lady Elizabeth Hamill, um, and she is the Order of the Falcon member. Um, I think she is a recent widow. Um, okay. That's about it. That's all I all I got right now. Hmm. So, I'm not exactly sure what I picked. Oh, you okay. You can pick either one of the required characters or any other character that you can go for. Mm-hmm. So, right now, you could pick the judge, um, or anything you want. You could be another. You could even be another Order of the Falcon member if you so chose. Okay. Um. I think I want to be the judge's bailiff. Sure. Um, I think his first name would be John, but I'm not sure what his last name would be. <laughs> That's fine. It's bailiff, B A L I F F. Yeah. No. E. Is there any e in there? A I L I F F. No. No. Hmm. My guess, Whatever. Okay. Uh, next up is Matt. Uh, I'm going to go with a uh, simple country lawyer. Um, Uh, Roscoe. I don't know. I got a last name. That's fine. I, I want to go. With, I want to go with Finch, but that seems too annoying. <laughs> I'll say country lawyer. Okay. So I guess that leaves me with Judge, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, judge Dread. Uh, I'll go with uh, the name being something like John Lestrange. Okay. That's not ominous at all. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the next thing we do is we go around in the same order as we chose characters, and we describe uh, in like one or two sentences what our character's thinking. So... Um, I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking Lady Elizabeth wants to see Mark Lee hung because Mark Lee, um, allegedly killed her husband. Okay. Uh, Ben? 
Okay. Um, I think uh, the bailiff John knows that this is a highly contested uh, trial, and he just wants to keep everything short and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to reduce any trouble. Yeah, we do have two Johns. Um, oh, I didn't. I oops. Um, uh, you can change mine to like Mark. No, we have a Mark. Um, to no, we don't. Uh, isn't Mark? Mark Lee, Lee is the yeah. guy that's been tried. Oh yeah, we do. Yeah, he's the guy who tried. Um, Paul, Peter, something else biblical. Jebediah. Uh, How about um, How about Luke? Luke Lestrange. Sure. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so Roscoe is thinking that if we don't get this trial over, that we're all going to be lynched by the mob outside. Ooh. Awesome. Okay. Um, I guess that means it's my turn now. Um, Luke is thinking that he doesn't believe that that Mark is a Confederate spy. Okay. You said he does think that, right? He doesn't. Oh, he doesn't. doesn't. Okay. All right. Um, so... I think um, to start it off, I think uh, I think Lady Elizabeth um, will, will look flustered in like her bonnet and like stuff like that with like a one of those like fans or whatever, and she's like fanning herself, and she's like looks tired, like exhausted, like she's been here all day, and uh, she just like just outbursts saying like, uh, "Judge, when when will this be over?" When both the defense and the, um, when both the defense, I keep thinking offense, shoot, um, prosecution. yeah, when both the defense and prosecution have finished their case, now, Miss, what was it, Hamill, if you would sit down so we can return to order, please. <sighs> Very well. Now, Miss. Now, Mr. Roscoe, you were saying? Judge, Your Honor, you must see that the defendant, Mark Lee here, he has clearly, clearly come down up from one of those southern states. He has tried to incite a riot in our fair city. And. You can tell, you can hear the people outside. They want justice. They want justice for our fair town. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth also outbursts again and killed my husband. I think the bailiff just kind of like, like he's got like a, like back then, didn't they have like huge st stabs, sticks? So like he went, sure, they do now. Right. <laughs> he he like wraps it on the he wraps it on the floor, loudly trying to uh, retain order for the judge. Okay, I think we hear uh, more commotion stirring in the background, like people are like banging on the doors. Yeah, thank you, John. Now, 
if you do not cease this endless interruption, I will have John escort you to the premise, uh, escort you from this courthouse and into the comforting arms of the of the crowd outside. <laughs> um, I think I think Lady Elizabeth uh, it gets sharp and uh, and says, um. You opening those doors for anyone will be opening a floodgate. I won't be going anywhere. Now carry on with this with this ludicrous trial and just get to your verdict of guilty so we can all go home at this late hour. Yes. Okay. Um I think the defense, I'm just going to summarize whatever point they're going to make, but they're going to try and attack, um, uh, what's it, the, uh, he's, they're going to try and attack Roscoe's lack of evidence to support it, a lack of papers or whatever, and Roscoe can defend that however he pleases. It's simply ludicrous, you see, that these people, that the defense can honestly believe that this man is innocent. The blood was on his hands. The blood of this fair lady's husband. In this, she, he was trying to incite the town to violence. cause chaos here in the north. The man is clearly a southern spy and must be put down. Okay. Um, the, uh, Luke looks unconvinced and is about to open his mouth and then light, lightning flashes outside and he it goes dark for a second or whatever like the lights flicker as the lightning flashes and then when everyone can see again um Luke just is dead with an arrow sticking out of him oh no um I think uh Lady Elizabeth um does a very well timed um and well practiced gasp oh. I think John run, rushes over to the judge to ascertain his condition. Roscoe pulls a handkerchief out of his pocket and is dabbing himself on the forehead. <laughs> Just, oh, oh no, oh. Yeah. Um, the, like, I, I feel like the beating on the door is getting ever more rhythmic. And, yeah, like, and... Yeah. The lady is looking towards the bailiff for some sort of order of being like, "Well, what are you doing?" It's <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I think he's just completely at a loss. Um, probably shouting for order, and but no one, no one listening, of course. Um, and then there's probably. At some point, then a you know like a stone through the window or something, and yeah, um, the man. Hmm. Looks like we lost him. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, damn it! Damn it! Hangouts. Um. <laughs> Well, I, w I was just gonna add a t add to that um, that uh, Lady Elizabeth wants to take charge of the situation, and before the mob starts storming through the doors, um, it says, uh, "Hey, um, I know, like we must we must hurry. I know I know a secret way out of here. Follow me. There's no time to explain." And she like goes to like a uh one of like what you know like panels of wooden cabinets or whatever, and like knocks and like. A couple ways and like a door opens and it's clearly goes down to some sort of passage yeah 
Does she let everyone through, or does she leave, like, Mark Lee and stuff behind? Oh, she leaves Mark Lee. Uh, the only, only like, the judge and, and Roscoe and everybody and the bailiff and stuff are, are able to get out. Okay. Before like, the mob comes. Yeah, I think uh, just as she's, like, closing the door or whatever, um, the door, the door, the actual main door breaks down and... And you just hear someone's gruff voice saying, "There, there they are. There's the southerners." Oh yeah, and uh, like at that point, like we go to the inside of the the cabin or whatever, and you hear like the click or whatever. Like yeah. it's like we we got out. Mm -hmm. I think we had the answer to our question. I don't. Okay. Yeah. Go there and lynch mob. Yep, mob rule. Uh, I'm feeling dark for that scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Since it's been uh, about an hour, do you want to like? Yeah, I was take gonna... a break and give Ziff a chance to get back. No, exactly. That's exactly what we're gonna do. Um, so we're gonna take a quick five minute break. I'm um, trying to get. Oh, Seth just got back here, but. He's got back. Just in time for our hour, our hourly break. So we're going to do a quick uh, break real quick and we'll come back. Sorry about that. Hey, no problem. <laughs> 